I will be followed by our graduate speaker, Shaylin Conti. Let's go. Thank you for the warm introduction. To all those that both hyped me up and curbed my nerves to speak on behalf of the class of 2023, thank you. My name is Shailen Conti, and I am so grateful for the opportunity to represent our cohort on speaking on such a momentous day. To the professors, faculty, and staff, your wisdom imparted on us over the years is surely recognizable, but your support and encouragement is undeniable. Your office doors were always open, and there was no ambition of ours too steep for you to help us reach. I believe that the best challenge you set us up for was to continually challenge ourselves, challenge our methods, our approaches, our own understanding, and to stay humble in times of adversity we might face in our future, to be okay with being uncomfortable, and stay, oh, and truly always encouraging us to be genuinely ourselves for the most transparent patient practitioner relationship. You prepared us for uncertainty, the emotional baggage that comes with the job, the shortcomings, and the endless redos that await. But most of all, you prepared us to be passionate, vibrant, creative, and relentless occupational therapists. Our textbooks and our PowerPoints will always be there. But the lessons you taught us went so far beyond the pages. Now our seats in the classroom make space for you to do, do the same for other individuals. Our spots at field work hold new opportunities. And our roots will always be here at Rocky Mountain College. But I think it's our time to blossom as clinicians. As we transition from being students you have educated to colleagues, I'm making this promise for all of us that you didn't know, but we're gonna start only emailing you during regular business hours only. <laughs> to everyone in the room, on Zoom, in our hearts and on our minds today, thank you for celebrating with us and around us. We are so fortunate to have you for not only this landmark of a day, but for every day leading up to now and all the days to come. For those that played patience to our measuring tools when we forced you to move your arm this way or that way, and then we're like, for real, can you look like you're in pain so it's a real situation? Thank you. To those that answered our calls crying out, literal tears and tiredness and mental fatigue, reminding us of why we started this journey. For those that waited on a text response for weeks from us, for us to just say, hey, sorry, I was a bit busy, what's up? <laughs> Thank you to the ones that cheered us on to finish assignments, semesters, clinical rotations, exams, field work. Thank you for being willing to celebrate it all. I guess what I'm trying to say is, thank you for those that believed in us. It meant more to us than we will ever be able to express. Your support has had a way of leading the way. The trail was paved thus far because of what you have tirelessly carved out for us. And when we had challenges or forks in the road, your guidance was that of like a stack of rocks up ahead, in indicating the way, leading us right to where we are today. We would not be where we are, who we are, or what we are without you. Graduates. Doctorates of Occupational Therapy graduates. <laughs> Which leads me to my next point, the front three rows. Exhale. Straighten your spine, depress your shoulders, because we friggin' did it. <laughs> Congratulations to my favorite classmates of all time. I am honored and holding back a lot of tears as I get to stand here today and celebrate with you. Has three years felt like a blur to anybody else? The last time we were together was right before our field work, two rotations started. It, had been, it has been 11 months since we collectively gathered and celebrated. And in full transparency, I kind of was hesitant on just how am I going to convey a message to classmates who I haven't seen in 11 months. We are in all different places now with different aspirations and career ambitions. How do I pull it all back together for you guys? 
then I realized it's so much more simple than what I was making it to be. Just for one moment today, I would like to take focus off of graduation day. Recall who you were at the start of this program and compare it to who you are now. Because then I thought I could not do this without you. And now I know I can't do it without you. Because you, you are my prepped and primed classmates who are about to be my colleagues for life. You are the ones who I will confide in when I'm uncertain, when I want a second opinion, when I am doubtful, doubtful or losing steam. You guys are my encouragement as you have been since day one. This collective bunch is exactly what I was dreaming of when I started this program. On that note, as we gather one last time as a cohort, I owe you the most gratitude. A road trip is only as fun as the people inside the van make it. And thank you for making this the most best memorable road trip ever. Travel back to week two of graduate school, January 20th to 24th of 2020 to be precise. We were assigned to read two articles over the weekend about the field of occupational therapy, what occupational therapy is and what we strive to be, and have it memorized by Monday. And one article really stuck out to me and still does to this day. Not entirely because it has helped me shape the field of occupational therapy and understand, but every time I read it, I get more and more confused about the field of occupational therapy than when I read it the first time. So I guess I deemed it appropriate to be the framework for my speech today to get you all caught up to speed on our field. Reflections on Doing, Being, and Becoming by Ann Allert Wilcock. Doing. Quoted in the article, William Schaff states, True passion and doing what is important to us does not require us to destroy ourselves in the process. The act of doing was put to the test during our time as students. First and foremost, we are a melting pot of eclectic human beings that brought all of our individual passions, personalities, walks of life, and cultures together in one room for two years straight. What would destroy others? the 28 of us blossomed in this arena. We use our differences as learning opportunities to support each other to do our very best. Amongst the projects, papers, fieldwork, readings, group work, clinics, exams, and full agendas, we had an unspoken rule that to be able to do just that, we had to have each other's back. I have never laughed more or loved stronger than the days on campus with my cohort. And that is what supported me to be able to do the things. Amongst the unexpected emotions of moving away from families and hometowns and during a pandemic, those that got married, had babies, shout out to our four baby boy mascots, and enough fur babies to create a zoo, we realized that the doing in life doesn't stop for nobody. And although it doesn't stop for no one, it definitely operates smoother with a well-oiled wheel with the support we created here. Ask any Billings restaurant that had to supervise us walking in and asking for space for about 28 for events big or small that we could not pass up celebrating. We always found a way to celebrate in our doing. Now, don't mistake our, our victories for our challenges. The doing took endurance. We constantly reminded ourselves and each other that our mistakes deserve to be highlighted just as much as our successes. Without the give and take and the trial and error, we would not be the strong, empathetic, and resilient occupational therapists that I believe we're, up to be, we're geared up to be. Trust me, if you read through our group me messages, you would understand that when one student had the, had the courage to state um, what assignment is due at midnight, <laughs> There was another student there to back them up to get it done. Being. As quoted in the article, being is about being true to ourselves, to our nature, and to our essence, and to what is distinctive about us to bring to our others as part of our relationships and to what we do. To be, in the sense, requires that people have time to discover themselves, to think, to reflect, and to simply exist. I believe that where we have been blessed to attend graduate school in this beautiful nature, amongst mountains and rivers and vast land, 
taught us more about being than we can ever begin to explain. Someone once told me that to be, you must be in a relentless pursuit of an unhurried life. Until moving to the state with these people, I had no clue what that meant. The relentless pursuit of an unhurried life has now framed who I am and who I strive to be as a practitioner. And this is not to say our hustle and bustle in the new career won't test us. When we need a firm reminder about what it means to just be, I propose a challenge to my classmates. Wherever you are, you need to take a mindful travel back to Billings, Montana. You are going to have to recall the moments of hurry and when you stood in line at Albertsons. The act of being looks a lot like that. When the clerk cared more about how your day was than the lines of people that waited, there's, that is the being you should always strive for. Being requires a high level of introspection. And if something begins to feel off in your practice, check in with yourself. You can only pour from a pitcher that you have spent intentional time replacing. Which leads me to our final point, becoming, meaning coming to be. As quoted, life is a process. We are a process. Everything that has happened in our lives is an integral part of our becoming. Pause. Y'all take a look around. Look towards the ones that have been there from the beginning, towards the one that, ones that will be there in the end. Everything and everyone that has been a part of our becoming. This whole becoming thing, it's not a static moment in time. It is you walking across the stage in kindergarten wanting to be a firefighter or a veterinarian. It is the wins and losses in sports performances and every laugh, every tear, and every motivational song lyric along the way. It equates to the ones on earth and in heaven that have had your back. The ones by your side through it all and the ones you have let go to keep going and growing. And yes, of course, every challenging experience throughout graduate school that you poured your blood, sweat, heart, mind, and tears just to potentially fall short of the outcome you were striving for. Do not let it set you back. You are always becoming. As I challenge you to recall how you got here, know that the continuation of yourself comes from within. No one else has the capacity to know us as well as we can know ourselves. It is in the awareness of ourselves that our strengths lie. And awareness of every aspect of ourselves allows us to become who we are. Owning ourselves is probably the richest gold mine any of us will ever possess. So maybe all along, the confusion in the article about the field of occupational therapy needed a redefining moment to have true relation and understanding. The emotions that equate to this day. Graduation day. It is not the profession that lies ahead as much as it is, as it is who we are becoming to fulfill the role as healthcare profession, professionals. If someone were to ask me today about what occupational therapy is, which, let's be honest, people ask often and indefinitely, I like to think I would have a more well-rounded answer now. The field of occupational therapy is what it is because of those that fulfill the role. My classmates here today. Reflective, empathetic, evolving, passionate, and practitioners that are always becoming. So, classmates, my friends, my soon-to-be colleagues, and most of all, my forever confidants. Between you and I, I would like to add another category to the article that took me years to dissect. A category that I can argue may only apply to us. The idea of what will always be. Because your individual strength and our collective power. Your individual support and our unrelenting teamwork. Your empathy over these three years and our emotional backbone we have built for years to come. We have something special. I stand by each of you the way you have stood beside me. What will always be. It has been a pleasure to get absolutely tried and tested with you guys over the last three years. And I would not change a single thing. Now, what do you say we do the dang thing, get the show on the road to walk across the stage, shake a lot of hands, smile for a million photos, and then after all is said and done, 
we do one final group hug to honor and celebrate all we have become individually because of each other. On behalf of the overzealous Doctorate of Occupational Therapy graduate students in the front, thank you all for taking the time to be here, to tune in, and to cheer us on throughout it all. Your support is one to be celebrated too. Thank you.